Okay, ladies and gents, it's our turn on this block of power. Now, normally, we build a lot of street and strip type engines to appeal to the general performance enthusiast. Well, for example, like our 69 Royal Bird Firebird, Chuck 69 Chevelle with the big blower motor, our 98 SS Camaro with the Pro Charger, the Monte Carlo, and even the Edelbrock track car. But today, we're focusing on a race-only engine, and we can't do that without talking about alcohol. Now, it's not the kind that'll put you under the table, but the kind that'll get you to the finish line faster. Pure methanol, also known as methyl alcohol, is a required fuel used in champ cars, monster trucks, USAC sprint cars, and dirt track series like the World of Outlaws. It's also used by all types of drag racers, whether it's a 7.0 index car or a wild Outlaw 10.5 car. Before you play with it, you need to know the history about it. Now, ancient Egyptians actually used a raw form of methanol and some other chemicals for their embalming process. Back then, methanol was a byproduct of wood. It wasn't until 1923 German chemists found a way to convert synthesis gas into methanol. It didn't take long for racers to figure out that King Tut had something going for them, too. The power-crazed open-wheel racers figured out it was a fuel that made the cars faster and it was safer to burn than gasoline. In fact, in 1964, the American IndyCar series made the switch to methanol after a bad crash and explosion at the Indy 500. It killed two drivers. And they kept that mandated for 42 years. In 2006, they made the switch to ethanol. The largest use of methanol by far is in making other products. Now about 40% of methanol is converted into formaldehyde. From there, it's used in products like plastics, plywoods, and even solvents. Now if you're a person from a cold area, it's also used in windshield wiper fluid to keep it from freezing up. Now they also used it as an engine coolant back in the early 1900s, and the Germans even used it as rocket fuel in World War II. That's some of the history. Now back to our world and why racers like to use it so much. Now methanol actually burns cooler and slower than gasoline. And an engine burning methanol will actually burn a little more than two times the amount of fuel than a gasoline engine. The more fuel you can get into the cylinder and burn efficiently, the more energy you're going to create. The spark plug gap will have to be tighter so the spark is more powerful to light off the extra fuel. When you mix that with the cold, dense air charge the alcohol makes, the engine is going to make more power and a lot more torque. Running alcohol won't always gain top end horsepower, but the torque gains can be massive, and you'll see it where you need it most, a lot more than gasoline. Tuning is simple. Most alcohol racers go off VGTs and spark plug readings to tune their engine. Plus, alcohol only costs about $2 a gallon, race gas five to seven. So over a three-day event, do the math. You're gonna save some money. The cooling effects of the fuel are huge. It's really hard to overheat an alcohol engine. Plus, the density altitude changes don't affect the alcohol as much as the gasoline engines. Another reason to run alcohol over gas is gas is dirty. You'll end up getting carbon buildups, fouled plugs, and sooner or later, the smell's gonna become part of your persona. Now, if all this alcohol stuff is new to you, it's really not that scary. Here's the easiest way to tackle it first. We teamed up with a company called Patriot Performance, and earlier today, we took delivery of one of their crate engines. It's a 383 cubic inch small block Chevy designed to run on alcohol that'll make 600 plus natural aspirated horsepower. The best of all, you'll be able to buy it as a crate engine direct from them. To make that kind of reliable power, it uses a Dart SHP block, Patriot heads, Eagle Forge rotating assembly with flat top pistons, and a Howard's 4.7 swap solid roller camshaft. But the only way to show you the design of this engine compared to a gas burner is blow it all apart. And that's exactly what I did. Now when we come back from the break, we're gonna take you to Patriot Performance and show you how they design and machine their custom parts. Then I'll reassemble it, show you how all the components work together and prove it on the dyno. Welcome back to Horsepower's Alcohol Engine Project. Today we're following the lead of a lot of outlaw racers who made the move to methanol for its power potential. Of course, no matter what kind of fuel you use, racing's a pricey passion. Money may not buy you happiness, uh, but what else is gonna get you that new set of tires or engine part you need? Uh, my heart's always been in racing, love racing. Raced for years, couldn't afford it. Marty Witt's been there. 
And that's the reason behind the philosophy of his company, Patriot Performance, offering quality and performance that's affordable to the average guy. Today, this company is one of the largest suppliers of ported heads for small block Fords and Chevys, big block Chevys, LS, and modular Ford motors. His five CNC machines see very little downtime. Getting the flow, that's like black magic. I mean, it's a touch and feel. I did it out of my house before I had a flow bench. If I was there moving through a head, that's, you know, I'd, I'd want the easiest route and the smoothest way, and that's how I used to do it. Here they designed their own special CNC programs for runners and combustion chambers. We've got everything that we need to do it correctly and uh, and get what we need out of it. Start from a raw cast and end with a nice finished piece at the, you know, the end of the day. You know. These days it's not just about heads, they also build engine packages for all kinds of enthusiasts. Even a couple of horsepower guys hoping to try out an alcohol burning small block. You'll see all the parts we're using for hours later, but now a closer look at some of the work that goes into it. In addition to CNC porting, heads are carefully detailed to remove any slight leftover roughness. Cylinder head porting is more about how well the air flows than it is about port size. Same goes for combustion chambers. The material removed should not increase the chamber size by more than a cc or two. This company has spent a lot of time developing a proprietary valve seat design for heads as well. Marty's facility also has a flow bench that gets constant use, verifying the quality control of finished race-ready heads. The guys here not only supply heads and engines to racers, well, they walk the walk too. For example, engine assembler Neil Hawkins here races this beautiful Mustang in Orska's modified street class. Marty just built a new car to compete in Limited Street. Plus, he spends many hours supporting part-time racers at tracks throughout the South. It helps, I think, a huge amount, uh, being out there with the racers, supporting them, uh, putting on racing. Yeah, a lot of grassroots racers stay on track with the help of a little homegrown company in Alabama. Bunch of gearheads who never give up their quest for the perfect performance cylinder head. I've been doing it for 18 years and I still learn stuff. Once I start on the head and designing new intake runners or whatever, I learn stuff every day that I do it. To ensure all the engines make the rated horsepower and the parts stay consistent, every fourth or fifth engine is actually ran on the dyno. Now that's good quality control. Now when we come back from the break, you're going to see us assemble our small block, run it on our dyno on alcohol. Make sure you stay tuned. Today it's all about alcohol. Moments ago you saw some of the science and skill involved in prepping the right parts for a small block alcohol engine. Now it's time for us to put this one together. The rotating assembly gets planted in this cast iron block from Dart that comes precision machined and clearanced for a 375 stroke. It's got a priority oiling system, which means oil is directed to the mains first for more complete lubrication. It's got an extra thick deck for good gasket sealing and all the bolt holes are blind. The crank is an Eagle forged steel piece with a 375 inch stroke and radius rod journals. One major characteristic of an alcohol engine is the high compression ratio. Now with all the extra fuel being introduced to the cylinder, you're going to take up more volume. Now with a mixture of a lot stronger spark, you're going to make more power than gasoline engine. It's going to force the piston down harder and you're going to make more horsepower and torque. Getting more compression starts with these forged flat top pistons with valve reliefs. The rods are forged H beams and we'll hold the caps in place with ARP bolts and torque them to 63 foot pounds. The cam's a solid roller from Howard's. Operating range is 3,200 to 7,000 RPM, and duration at 50 thousandths lift is 260 on the intake, 264 on the exhaust. Plus, it's ground for a 4.7 swap, which we'll get into a little later on. Naturally, this engine uses a double roller timing set, and with the cover bolted up, we can finish up front with the balancer and aluminum high volume water pump. Back on bottom, we're installing one of Melling's high-volume oil pumps before bolting up this seven-quart pan. 
Next, an oil filter adapter in place finishes up the bottom end. With lots of lube, we can drop in a set of Howard solid roller lifters. And with this setup, remember the tie bars go inside facing the camshaft. Here's something kind of interesting about these Felpro 1094 steel shim gaskets. They've got a compressed thickness of only 15 thousandths, and they require the machine surface of the block and heads to be 60 RMS or smoother. Now, that's basically a scale used to measure the smoothness of a surface. For example, glass has an RMS rating of four. As a rule of thumb or thumbnail, I guess, if you can't catch the machine surface with your fingernail, you should be fine. We know we're good with these Patriot Performance Cylinder Heads because they have a rating of right around 50. Now, of course, you saw how they were ported and polished. Now, as far as the sizes go, we have 225cc intake runners and a 64cc combustion chamber. Now, a mixture of the piston height and the combustion chamber is going to give us our 12 and a half to 1 compression ratio. The valves measure in at 208 on the intake, which is going to allow us to get more air and alcohol into the cylinder. And as long as we can burn it efficiently, it's going to make big power. The exhaust valve measures in at 160. The springs come with titanium retainers and can handle a max lift of 700 thousandths of an inch. We're using ARP assembly lube and their bolts, torquing them to 65 foot-pounds. To move those big valves, we've got a set of hardened push rods, and for rocker arms, a set of scorpions with a 1.5 ratio. Since the valve train is a solid roller setup, we need to lash the intake and exhaust at 24 thousandths. Finally, this billet girdle goes on the studs to prevent them from deflecting under heavy loads. Edelbrock Super Victor intake manifold is a favorite among guys who race with alcohol. The direct line of sight flow path means more air flow, and the extended cross-sectional area of the runners is good for making torque in the three grand to 8,500 RPM range. While well, Mike gets the motor ready to swing over to a dyno cart, I'm gonna drain all the gasoline out of our dyno's fuel cell here. That's to make way for this. It's a 55 gallon drum of methanol. Like natural gas, alcohol has no odor. That's why some guy somewhere adds a stink to it for safety reasons. Alcohol also has no lubrication properties and that can cause cylinder washdown and excessive wear. Well, some real smart guy came up with a solution to both issues. A bottle of this stuff it contains a lubricant. It also adds an odor so you know you're handling alcohol instead of, well, water. You can get it in all kinds of scents. We went with cherry bomb. You can also get strawberry, blueberry, watermelon, pina colada. Hey, what do you want? All joking aside, you need to be really careful and avoid splashing this stuff on your skin or handling it in a confined space. If enough buildup is allowed, it oxidizes, forms formaldehyde, and causes blindness and even insanity. Like we said earlier, an alcohol engine will burn over twice the amount of fuel as a gas burner, so you got to step up the size of the carburetor as well. For that, we went with the Holley HP Series race carb. It's 950 CFM, and the main difference from the gas version is larger circuitry and the calibration to flow more fuel. So are the jets. 144s compared to 79s on a gas 950. The squirters are also larger, measuring 55 versus 31s for the gas. Plus, it's got stainless steel throttle blades and needles to help prevent corrosion. Now, when we come back from the break, we'll show you how to complete that 4.7 swap on the camshaft. You're watching Horsepower. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Horsepower collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Horsepower is on alcohol today, at least our small block Chevy is, and we're about to wind up this project with the ultimate power test. We started out with a trip to Patriot Performance where our aluminum heads were CNC machined, ported, and polished. These guys have developed a race-ready alcohol crate engine, which we blew apart to show you how it goes together, complete with a stroker crank, flat top pistons, and a cam specially ground for a 4-7 swap. After bolting up their heads and finishing the valve train, we dropped on a Super Victor single plane intake manifold. Then came the juice, a barrel of methanol we enhanced with cherry scented top end loop. For more fuel flow, we 
Chevy opted for this Holley HP race car. Before our first all alcohol engine test, I'm dumping the mechanical water pump and installing our electric pump that's already plumbed for the dyno. This bronze gear drives our MSD Pro Billet distributor that's got a mechanical advanced and high output pickup to trigger the ignition. We mentioned the cam is ground for a 4.7 swap. What that is really is a firing order change that moves the power stroke from four to seven and well, vice versa. Now to complete it, you also got to swap out the seven and four plug wires here on the distributor. Some engine builders claim they get a lot more horsepower with high performance engines with this 4.7 swap. In fact, we made eight more on one of our test motors a few years ago. Maybe the same trick will work on this thing. We don't usually use headers with EGT bungs in here, but this time we're going to tune our engine using exhaust gas temperature readings from our plug. That's about all we know about making power with alcohol, except, of course, how much this Chevy can make in our dyno cell. Wow. 591 horsepower, 560 foot-pounds of torque. A good start. Yeah. That is just with 33 degrees timing. Let's push it up all the way to 39 degrees this time. 588, we're down. It didn't like that much more timing. Shut her down, go read a plug. Alcohol racers tune at the track by plug readings. Now you can tell by this plug, the ground strap has a discoloration towards the inside of the strap. That's showing we're a little bit too far advanced. So let's take out a couple of degrees and see what happens. All right, we're going in the right direction. We sure are. 602. We're getting closer to that sweet spot for sure. Let's see if 35 degrees is it. All right, let's see what she'll do. She'll take it to six grand. Six sixteen, yeah. five hundred and seventy-five foot pounds of torque. That little thing's making some power. Three hundred and eighty-three yeah. inches. Yeah, that, that thing was grunting for a little small bar. There's probably a couple more horses in there, and we could find it if we had time to look for it. But think about this. That's about 160 horsepower more than a same size gasoline engine with lower compression, of course. Basically the same parts and same price. No wonder racers are hooked on alcohol. Well, you just passed your alcohol 101 test. Now you can go out there and use that knowledge. Oh, but don't forget to come back next time. We'll see you.